The first time I saw them was at the county fair when Lucy was seven. We were enjoying cotton candy as dusk fell over the midway. That's when I noticed the strangers. There were three loitering separately throughout the crowd. Baggy outdated clothes covered their hunched frames. But what struck me most was the frozen, two wide grins each wore beneath sunken eyes. Like grotesque masks they couldn't remove. As we passed one leaning against a food stall, his head swiveled mechanically to follow us with an unblinking stare. His smile seemed to widen, devoid of mirth. Every instinct told me these were not mere eccentrics, but something more sinister lurking amongst the unsuspecting families. Still, I wrote them off as local oddities people tolerated. As long as they kept their distance, I had no reason to feel threatened by their presence. But a lingering unease soured the rest of our evening. Those smiles masked something profoundly unnatural behind their human facades. Over the following year, sporadic late-night sightings began. I'd occasionally glimpse one of the smiling ones, as I dubbed them, passing under a streetlight then slinking into darkness. Always grinning with that same irrational exuberance. Others around town whispered of seeing them, too but most turned a blind eye. Then people started disappearing. A teenage babysitter here. A single mother there. No evidence of break-ins or violence left behind, they simply vanished into the night. The talk simmered of a serial kidnapper. But I knew who was responsible, the smiling ones, taking those who wouldn't be missed. I warned Lucy fervently to avoid strangers, especially any trying to lure her smiling. She sensed my dark obsession with those phantoms, though too young to fully comprehend the threat that now lurked outside our home. That false sense of safety was shattered late one foggy afternoon. I was gardening as Lucy played with dolls by the back fence. Glancing up from my weeding, a jolt of horror shot through me. There in the mist stood one of them, gangly and hunched, head cocked staring at my daughter. It took all my self-control not to scream as I approached. But as I drew close, the figure receded into the wafting fog until fading completely. Trembling, I scoured the area but found only undisturbed grass. No footprints or evidence of trespassers. Had it been just shadows and imagination? Either way, dusk was no longer safe. I ushered my rattled daughter indoors, skin crawling with a sense of hidden eyes upon us. That week I invested in cameras and motion lights I installed myself while Lucy was at school. I'd capture proof of the freakish beings, then authorities would have to intervene. As long as we were vigilant, we'd be safe. But the smiling ones evolved in cunning, learning to avoid and disable the new systems. Brief electrical surges would precede their arrival as cameras mysteriously went dark. Images revealed only blurred streaks and static. They knew when I slept and when the house was empty. Soon even Lucy grew cognizant of our uninvited guests peering through windows or hovering at the tree line. I often heard her talking to herself about the funny guys watching. She seemed less afraid than I was, only cautioned. Then last month it finally happened, my worst fear made reality in a flash. I bent down to inspect a disabled motion sensor when Lucy called from the driveway. I glanced up to see a pale gangly figure holding her hand, grinning down at me. Time dilated as I shouted and sprinted toward them. But the wraith pulled Lucy effortlessly away, her protests fading. By the time I turned the corner, the street was empty once again. No vehicles passing by had witnessed the abduction. I panicked and raged helplessly, knowing police would chalk it up as an overactive imagination. 
What evidence was there of a phantom spiriting off my child in broad daylight? No one else had ever glimpsed their unnatural faces. Except maybe other victims who knew the smiling one's hunger all too well. I tracked down locals who had lost loved ones unexplained. While wary, their eyes reflected the deep horror only experience with those creatures could etch onto a mind. Enough nodded knowingly at my scribbled sketches. Together we pieced together what we could of the fiends. They had lurked here for ages, a cult's whispers claimed. Now their numbers were slowly growing as those they took sometimes joined their malformed ranks. It was a pattern of encroaching infestation too slowly paced for most to notice. Not until you loved one never came home. United by trauma, we outcasts now work to raise alarms and keep watch over the vulnerable. Police whistle and harass rather than assist. So we patriot the shadows, cameras and crude weapons in hand, determined to document the smiling ones however futile. To prove we aren't insane just to sleep at night. That the neighbor who waves, the librarian who smiles, they could be watching us, learning routines. Because the only way to hide is to never be seen alone. Varied paths and schedules throw off those who thrive on creeping patterns. Of course, they still manage to take a straggler now and then. I hold hope Lucy is merely kept hostage somewhere, not yet converted fully. If I can capture hard proof, I can force action and find where they hide in plain sight. Before my daughter's sweet face is warped into a grinning mask devoid of humanity or warmth. The others call me obsessed, reckless. Say I will only hasten my fate and never see Lucy again. But I must try. I won't lose my only child to the hungry void behind those empty frozen smiles. So now I watch the streets alone night after night, camera in hand. Hoping to finally glimpse those hunched squatting silhouettes scuttling just out of sight. To snap the instant their pale grinning masks turn my direction. Before they can register my presence, it will be too late. I'll have the evidence to awaken this slumbering town before the infection spreads to new hosts. Maybe even find where they cower from daylight's revealing rays. And bring my daughter home before it's too late. Before she becomes one of them. The smiling one stole Lucy from right under my watch. But they made a mistake in not taking me too. Because I have nothing left to lose in hunting the hunters. And with enough time and courage, even the cleverest monsters make mistakes. It's only a matter of time until they slip up. And then these desperate hands will wrench open their world to unmask the horrors festering inside. I will have justice for my daughter and the other innocents taken. This I solemnly vow. The next one who greets me grinning will find their own mask ripped away for all to see what rides beneath.